Okay, we're back. So, there was a little bit of a discussion at the last, end of the last uh, lesson that I kind of was messing up on trying to figure out. It was just some basic math, which is uh, typical. Anyhow, so the, the last question is, what is the lat long when the kids are standing on top of Standing Indian Mountain? And so I mentioned that, you know, how do you, how you get from, um, to make an accurate measurement. So there's my lookout mountain right there. I want to measure it all the way. I want to get the, the line that is perpendicular, which crosses at 90 degrees. Um, and you use that by using your paper correctly. We find out that this mark right here is correct for longitude. And by measuring my inches, so if I get my tens, where are they? There you go. So I'm from there all the way out to here. I get like 5.5, 5.6, 5 5.65. So I get 5.65 inches from that mark at Indian, uh, standing Indian Mountain all the way to here. And so what that means is, five, remember 5.65. So we already know in longitude, one inch is equal to 24.1 seconds. So if I do that in kind of a ratio, one inch is to 24.1 seconds as five, we measured 5.65 inches, right, is to x. We want to find out how many seconds we need to go over from that one side. So by doing that, I cross multiply and I see my x you know, my one inch is equal to, one inch is equal to uh, 24.65.65 is going to be, um, is going to be 136 um, seconds when you do this calculation. So it's basically just multiplying 5.65 by 24.1. 136 seconds, okay? So how many, how many uh, minutes and seconds is that? Well, if you, if you find out how many 60-second intervals are into that, um, you'll find out. You can't... Now, what I was doing wrong initially was I was taking 136 and dividing it by 60 and getting 2.3 something and thinking that was, uh, you know, um, 2 minutes, uh, 30 seconds or something like that. But in reality, what you've got to do is how many times does 60 go into this before you have a remainder and take the remainder? So we look at 60, if you divide it into 136, we know that uh, it'll go in twice, at least twice, before you have a remainder. 120, just do long division, subtract, uh, subtract 136 from 120. 60 won't go into 16, but that's the remainder, and that's your, that's your seconds. Um, I mean, that's your, uh, yeah, that's your seconds, that's your minutes. So it's two minutes, 16 seconds. And that's my distance and longitude difference from one corner over here over to the actual mark. And so we know it increases. So I just have to take this 8330, that's 30 minutes, 0 seconds, and add my 216 that I just found. Okay, so that's 216. So that would become 83, 32, 16. And so that's how you do that. And you do the same thing for your latitude, uh, same mechanics behind it. It's very simple. But uh, then you would get your longitude and latitude to be able to answer that question. So that's how you navigate that way. Okay? Okay, let's go on. Um, it says, meanwhile, Tom and Linda have hiked up that long trail, Riley Cove, to Chunky Gal Mountain. They stop at the trail intersect section at Grassy Gap. Okay, so let's go back to where these guys are. We know that, well, we can see Grassy Gap right here. Okay, so if we go back to where they entered, we know it was over on this end at Riley Cove. So we know that, uh, you can't see it. So they enter right here at Riley Cove. They kept walking. We flipped the map over. I got to do this because I'm on this um, projector thing, and it keeps. Uh, they keep walking Riley Cove, 
and we see the word grassy gap. So that's good. So it says they stop at the trail intersection at Grassy Gap. So there's a trail, and there's a trail. That's the intersection they stopped at. Okay. Um, Katie takes another, let me see, blah, blah, blah. What was the highest elevation they passed on the trail to this gap? Okay. So they're moving upwards. If you look back, and you have to look and see, is there a, is there a higher elevation where they where they were. Actually, I'm going to have to unfold this because it's kind of right at the loop. So this section here. Probably getting a headache. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little more. Okay, so... Um, that's where they hiked to. They want to know what was the uh, highest elevation that they passed in, high, in, in hiking to Grassy Gap. So when we look, they're coming up this cove from the road, and so they're going uphill. When you look at these measurements, like there's 3,800 feet. We go a little further. I um, uh, can't find it. 38, blah, 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 going that way. And then you've got... Uh, 38, 38, 38. Then you got 4,000. So there's 4,000. So they're going uphill. So they're following. They get up to this location. They're still going up. It's very steep right here, you can see. And generally, when they get to the top, this is the top because you can see. Oh, come on. You weren't even following that. So they're going uphill, going uphill, going uphill, and they get to the top here. This is the top of the mountain where these little circles are enclosed. They continue on, and they get to another kind of top right here. And this is probably the highest, kind of right in this area, this little knob thing right there, because they get to a top, and we've got to find out what that location is. So down here, we see that this is 4,000. So that line right there. If we go up to the next one, we know they're 40 foot increments, so it's 200. So that's 4,200 feet. There's another 40 they go up. 4,240 is going to be right about there. Okay? And so then they go along this path, and it looks like they are going down, going downhill at this point, but then they go up. But look, they hit, they hit this. Uh, 4240, so it's around 4240, something or four, maybe even even higher. But that's that's the highest point on this ridge that they map. So you just got to read, kind of, and look and see how you're going uphill, uphill, uphill. The tops of mountains or tops of ridges are kind of these circular areas. That's where everything culminates, and uh, and that's how you navigate these things. Might have even gone higher. Let's see. Are they still going uphill here? Let's see. So they went through that area. Let's go down. Actually, it's higher than that. So that's 42, 4,042. They're still going up, so I'm sorry. That's higher than that. 42, 4,200. We know that this is going to be another uh, 200 feet up. 44, maybe something like 44, uh, 4440 maybe. Being that I have the answer sheets, let's see what they actually say for that one. As soon as I find this, what number was that? That was 27, yeah, 4440. So that's what we found. So that's how you find that elevation. All right, so we move on. Ooh, that's really big. Let's zoom it out a little bit. So we're down here. Uh, Linda calls Sid on her cell phone, says they're so high, the signal works today. Linda tells Sid where she and Tom are. There's a brown hawk circling over it. Can you see it? Sid looks, but he does not see the hawk. He measures the azimuth on the quad map from standing Indian Mountain to Grassy Gap. So. Are they going to want that azimuth? 
uh, what is the azimuth that SID measures? Okay, so now we've got to look at the uh, azimuth to the nearest whatever. And so if you remember, they're at that grassy gap intersection, correct? And uh, let's make sure they're at that grassy gap intersection. Yep, they're still at that intersection. So we know that these guys are right there and they're communicating with the guys right there. So we got grassy gap and we've got this. My finger's on one and they're on the other. They want to know, first of all, what azimuth um, does Sid measure? Now I think Sid is at, uh, is it standing? Is he at standing? I don't remember who's right there. Linda calls Sid. Uh, who's with where? Yeah, Sid is on, on Indian Mountain. And so they want to know what the azimuth is um, over to where those guys are standing at Grassy Gap. So we take out our protractor. And again, the best way to do this is to take out a clean sheet or just a sheet of paper to kind of um, get the angle correct. You don't have to be in incredibly exact, but I, I measure from one side, so you can't see this, but I'm on, I'm all the way over on one side, and I'm making it so the paper is right on that edge. Okay? So there's my line, and there's my Indian gap right there. And I want to measure the grassy gap, so I'm going to place this like this. Okay? So it's right on top of that. And then I'll take my my ruler, or my we'll call it a scale because we're official, and I take it and so it intersects grassy gap in the little circle right down there. You see that circle? Whoops, right there. Take that, take grassy gap, that circle, and then I read what measurement on that. So it looks like it's these are in tenths. So that's 20, 19, 18, 17, perhaps 16. So it's going to be 16 degrees uh, moving up from 16 degrees moving up from the bottom portion. So if we were to draw this, just so everybody is reminded what that means, we measured that the azimuth, or just the measurement angle, was 16 degrees right here. Now remember, azimuth um, is going to be, it's measured from, um, from the north and south direction. So it's measured this way, and up this way, and then up this way, and then down this way. That's north, south, east, and west. And we've got this 16 degrees. So our azimuth has got to read north something west. We know we're northwest, but we don't want that 16 degrees. Remember, this is 0 to 90. <clears throat> we want this thing right in here. That's our, that's our angle. We want, what is this angle right here? Okay? And so we just take 90 and subtract 16 to give us what this angle is. So 90 minus 16, and if you do that, that becomes, um, uh, was it 74? 74 degrees. And so it would be north, 74 degrees west. That's the azimuth that they're looking at from Lookout Mountain to that grassy gap. So that's how you do that. So you got to be able to maneuver and use these azimuth things, and they penalize you. I mean, you got to be accurate in the way that you, uh, you put your protractor down and be as close as you can to it because they uh, take points off if you're not within a range of things. So they're looking for kind of knowing where it is, but just don't do a general, I know this kind of being 76, 77, something like that. Do it as accurately as you can. Okay. Let's do all this just because I'm exhausted. Okay, so there's a grassy gap on the final page. 
Okay, Sid also wants to test the scale. What is the distance from Lookout Tower Mountain uh, on the back of Benchmark K44? Give your answer. So, you know, it's just a measurement using scale. And so they want to give your answer to the nearest 100 feet. What is the distance from Lookout Mountain to the location uh, on the map of Benchmark K44? Well, the first thing is you got to find out what in the world is a benchmark and what is K44. And so if we look at Lookout Mountain, there's Lookout Mountain right there. Um, it's going to be somewhere in this vicinity, but somewhere close to where Sid is because he, he, he's close by. A benchmark is just an elevation reading to the nearest foot, and they've got names for them. K44 refers to something within the state of North Carolina. And the way they do it is they have a little X mark or a little cross, and you can see it right there. So BM is benchmark. Um, not to be confused with another BM. Uh, so K44, 4341. So we've got the actual elevation there. So he wants to know what's the distance um, in, you know, in feet to the nearest hundred, hundred. So I would just take out my scale again. Because we're always doing this. We know one inch is equal to 2,000 feet. I would measure from one to the other. I get two point. 2.2 something, 2.38 maybe, 2.38. I just multiply uh, 2.38 by 2.38 by 2,000, and in doing so, I get 47.60. That's about your feet. I think I want the nearest hundredth. <laughs> so. Let's see what kind of answer they're looking for. That, that's your feet. Um, so the nearest hundred, though, is 47. Uh, either 40, it's near, it's near to 48, 4800. They have 4700. So when they say to the nearest hundred, you got to go either 4800 or 4700. Here I've got 47 based on this measurement. So that's what I would say. They've got it something different, but uh, we can argue that later. Okay, then the last few are dealing with, the last two are dealing with this hawk thing, and I'm not going to do this right now. I'll talk to you more about this, and also how to uh, draw uh, to scale a certain area. You're going to have to be able to do that. But right now, I think this really gives us a good idea and understanding of how to maneuver with a topo map. And so hopefully that's been helpful, and uh, we'll talk more about. Uh, some of the other aspects here in a little bit.